We are always looking to add more power, but just as important as power is our technique or how we use that power. So can we take the same amount of power and amplify it to something incredible by using the material properties to our benefit? Let's find out by 3D printing our own air amplification blower and testing it out. So stick around. I'm on a mission to make this channel a success, so if you're enjoying this content and you want to help the channel to be sustainable, subscribe or consider supporting the channel more directly through Patreon. I also have some affiliate links below for good products that I use in my shop and in my videos on a regular basis if you'd like to support the channel in a different way. I think most people have probably heard of the bladeless fan, which was first made popular by the Dyson company. Now there are blades, by the way, they are just located in the base of the fan. Many of the ideas we're going to be talking about are coming from their design and many of those ideas have come from advances in technology used for flight. To understand what we're trying to accomplish here, there are a few key principles that we need to keep in mind. First, the air will want to equalize in pressure, moving from an area of high pressure to an area of low pressure. Air traveling at a uniform speed and angle, which then needs to move around an object like a wing of a plane, for example, will then increase in speed as it moves around that object. That increase in speed will cause the pressure of that air to drop. That air moving at higher speed will want to stick or be kept against the side of the aerofoil because the air surrounding that wing remains at a higher pressure and it's going to try and equalize and that will apply a force onto the air that's moving faster along that surface. Air surrounding a faster moving stream of air is entrained or it comes along for the ride. That air then increases in speed and again creates a lower pressure. The higher pressure again around it wants to equalize and more air again is entrained into the flow. Overall, inside of this area, we have a lower pressure zone, which then induces a flow of air to come in from the back. And because of that aerofoil shape, it also works to produce the same effects to propagate even more of this action as well. When I first heard of this bladeless fan concept, I thought it was a gimmick but actually it's not. There was a lot of careful engineering that went into this and I'd like to see if we can utilize it in the future for our purposes as well. Before we test the real world examples, let's try a simulation first. This is just my attempt at the shape. It's not optimized by any means. This is just to get a sense of how it works. So we have air coming in from our fan. It's then pressurized in this case. So a blower or impeller setup will work the best here to force the air through that very small slot at fairly high speeds as well. As the air comes through, it quickly equalizes in pressure with the surrounding, but the air is still moving at higher speed. So we have the area of higher pressure in the center, which then wants to apply a force to the air that's moving at higher speed and keeps it against the surface. Overall, we then create an area of lower pressure in the center compared to the area outside, which induces the airflow in from the back. This air coming from behind is also speeding up as it's pulled in around the aerofoil shape. And if we have the vectors turned on, we can also see that the air beyond the front is also being entrained into the flow as well. I've also created this simple duct with just an opening and I've created some interior corrugations like the supply pipe just for fun. And if we look at the simulation, we can see the higher speed cylinder of air coming out, which then slows very gradually. It is pulling in a little bit of air from behind, but it also is entraining quite a bit of air out in front. To compare, looking at the amplification method, we have the high velocity air only until the very edge of the front of the duct. After that, it slows dramatically. So right away, we're seeing that this approach is not really intended to retain that high velocity tight cone shape. It's really more about the overall volume of air that it's moving. If you've ever seen the commercials for the Dyson fan, they say that it can amplify the air by up to 16 times. Thin air and multiplies the airflow that's going in there by about 16 times but it makes no mention of the speed of the air. In fact, they actually speak about it feeling like a very gentle, cool, consistent breeze. They also talk about a regular fan with fan blades sending a slice of air, which tends to slap you in the face. Turbulent, almost slapping from the airflow. Which I can't say I've ever experienced personally, but maybe I'm just standing too far away from a regular fan for that to be possible. In the coming weeks, I want to see if we can use air amplification on our 3D printers, especially for the upcoming 3D printer duct challenge. And the T1 printer has a CPAP style fan on it, which acts a little bit like a compressor. Air both leaves the fan at high speed, but it also sends a large volume of air as well. 
Okay, so let's go ahead and print one of these to see if we can reproduce what we saw in the simulation. And for this, I've used my resin printer. And if you can believe it, this is my first time using a resin printer ever. I moved to resin because at this scale, I think the resin printer is gonna work the best. It's gonna give us much smoother surfaces as well, which should help to reduce the friction inside. And we really need that precision for those narrow openings as well. Now I don't have the wash and cure, so I've just cleaned it in a beaker of alcohol and cured it in the sun outside for a couple of hours. All right, so this has been outside for a few hours and it looks like the color has changed a little bit more to the orange color that I was expecting. So I just need to remove these supports. So I am just about ready to do some testing. I have the resin print that I made and I wasn't completely satisfied with this for a couple of reasons. One, just my inexperience with doing this. So I have a little bit of deformation here and the gap around the inside there isn't completely consistent either. And that's probably because I didn't exactly know how to do the supports. The other reason I'm not completely satisfied is because the area here is about 113 millimeters squared and the area that I have for releasing the air here on the inside is only about 55 millimeters squared. And because of that, I went ahead and scaled it up to this version. This is only 18% larger. And I also created this version here, which is dramatically larger, larger hoop. So this one pretty much matches the area of this. So it is pretty difficult with this duct design to measure the amount of volume of air that it's sending out because it relies on air around it to come in and supplement it. So I can't just bury it inside of a bag and see how long it takes for that to fill up. But what I can do is take this extremely expensive and high-end garbage bag and open one end and see how long it takes to fill up from just the one side. There were too many irregularities on the smallest orange hoop that I printed, so I decided to test only the FDM printed versions and there were some interesting results. Turn on high. Create an opening and... I know this test is not gonna be perfect because as the bag fills, air is also gonna be spilling out. So in reality, the fill time is probably gonna be quite a bit shorter than what I measured. But what we can say for sure right now is the largest hoop is not well suited for this. There's just too much area for the air to escape and it can't seem to generate the air speed and the air movement that's needed. Okay, I'll do the exact same test, but this time I'll remove this. Okay, that didn't seem like much of a difference. So let's just do it around the bag directly. For the smaller hoop, it is moving quite a bit more air than just the fan alone. But the same can be said about the straight open pipe. Now I have not refined the design at all, so the hoop size and the hoop shape is probably not ideal. So I can imagine that the efficiency of the version that I printed is still pretty low compared to the Dyson fan. This is just the start, so let's move on to the smoke testing to see if we can tell what exactly is happening in both the straight pipe and the air amplifier version. Okay, I think we're all set up and I'm gonna turn this on low speed. At slow speed, we can see that the air is being pulled in nicely from behind and the air is coming around the aerofoil shape and it's speeding up as well. Even at slow speed, it seems to be working pretty well. It's a little harder to tell that the smoke out front is being entrained into the flow also. Let's switch over to high speed. At higher speed, I noticed that far less smoke is getting around the hoop. Nearly all of it is being pulled in from the back.
Let's see if we can see the smoke coming out of this thing. Turn the fog on, fan on low. I've changed the smoke now to come in directly from the fan supply and we can see that it has a nice smooth flow. We can also see some turbulent interaction out front with the air around it as the cone shape gets even larger. It's again a little bit tough to tell, but the duct is not perfectly balanced. More air at higher speed is leaving the opposite from the fan supply side. Low speed. Switch to high speed. For the larger hoop, it's still working to pull the air in from behind pretty nicely. The air in the center though is not moving as quickly as the smaller hoop and the cone is growing more rapidly as it leaves the front of the duct. So I think this hoop is just a little bit too large for the fan that I'm using. Okay, I'm gonna switch the setup to just the tube alone. Low speed. Just the tube alone has very little restriction. It should be by far the most efficient, but we can see that the air behind is not being induced well into the flow and the air out front is not being entrained well either so it lacks the ability to use the air around it efficiently, but it makes up for it by having far less restriction from the fan and a tighter cone of faster moving air. High speed. We can see at high speed that it is able to pull some of the air in from all around. The amplified design that Dyson created does work well to pull a lot of air in from behind. However, the overall amount of air moved is not far off of what an unrestricted pipe can do. Both options move quite a bit more air than the fan alone. And it's actually pretty impressive that even a heavily restricted design like the one that I made performed so well. I'm not sure that I can reach 15 times the air, but I'm sure with some adjustment, it can be made to be quite a bit better, possibly even twice what I've created here. I've linked my version down below if you want to download it and try it for yourself and tweak the design to make it even better. As far as 3D printing is concerned, I think there is some value here. I think in the case of part cooling, we don't have much air out front to entrain, but we do have a lot of air from around for induction. So the next step here is to try and use what we've learned to produce a part cooling fan duct and test it out. So make sure you like the video and subscribe if you want to see that and let me know what you think about these tests and if you have ideas for tests of your own. Thank you to each of my patrons for your support and for making videos like this possible. Take care, and we will see you on the next one.